So I, I got all those, um... Just trained like a fucking maniac? Yeah, pretty much. This is Mark Belton, Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. We're here today with Silent Mike and Big George Lehman. George Lehman is going to show us how to deadlift. So he's going to have Silent Mike do a little bit of demo work and show us what's up, George. All right, awesome. Um, let's see what you have with uh, 135, man. Let's just see how it looks. I hope I impress you. <laughs> Try not to fart. I'm going to wait to uh, really start giving you any um, technique help until we get to 225, maybe 315. Look at that ass. He must work out. So you want to get a little bit of weight on there before you give too mm -hmm. much advice because it's too light right. to really even. What I will do is kind of point out like what I don't like as you as you work up in weight, and then once we get to like 315 or something, we'll change the form and see yeah. if it Which moves faster. Um, let's go 225. Yeah. First thing, in my opinion, yeah, stance is a little bit close. Okay, but we're not going to affect that just yet. We're huh. just going to have you do what you were going to do. Um, go ahead and grab a hold of the bar. Okay, that's actually about where I hold the bar too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what I would tell you to do is bring your grip in a little bit, not so much that you're on the, the right. smooth, but about as close as you can. Why do you uh, like a close grip? Because I noticed you know, you're, you got really wide shoulders, yeah. and your hands are probably in even a little bit closer than where your shoulders are. The bar bends more. You know okay. I mean? Like you'll see Chris Duffin or something, he'll, he'll deadlift sumo, he'll grab it like right in the center. <laughs> yeah. You get the most bend the closer your hands are. Right. If you deadlift like this, you're not only moving the bar a little bit further, it doesn't bend as well. Right. You know what I mean? Like you actually lose like some of the whip and some of the, the bend that you get off the floor. So I always try and get people to pull like pretty much as close as they can. Right. As long as they're not on the smooth because you know. Right. Yeah, you want to at least get, catch some of that knurling so you got a grip. All right, um, pretty good. Um, not a whole lot wrong with that in general. Uh, the only thing I would say is you could probably have the bar ever so slightly closer to you at the bottom. Okay. Again, not like you're doing it wrong by yeah, any yeah, means, yeah. but let's, let's try again. But you this want time, a little wider stance too? Yeah, this try. time we're gonna do a little bit different. I like to use the stance you jump with. Um, right. I'm not sure where I read about that, but I got right. it from someone else. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much whatever you would typically, if you were going to do like a long jump, it's all hip extension. Right. You know what I mean? So I'd, I'd take something about like this, straight up and down. Okay. You know what I mean? Because you're, you're never going to do a long jump like that. You right. know, your, your hip extends backwards. It's not that kind of shit. So I, I try and have my legs pretty much straight up and down, which also lets you get the closer grip. So something probably like that is kind of like ideal for you. What about uh, toes? Do you go straight, point it out a little bit? You know, point it out the tiniest bit. Okay but pretty close to straight forwards. You know what I mean? I like to um, torque my feet out a little bit and yeah, like yeah. push my knees out somewhat. So if you have your feet too far out, it's not even doable. Yeah. Right. If you have it too far in, obviously it's, it's not good either. Yeah. Um, but that seems, maybe move this one in like a quarter inch. Yeah. Something just like that. Maybe move that, that heel out a little bit too. There you go. Yeah, when the feet are pointed out a little bit, it allows you to get your knees out a little bit better and allows you to get your hips through at the top a little bit better, right? Mm -hmm. Try again? Yeah, let's, let's give it a shot again. Bar this time, a little though, bit closer in the uh, this time just grab a hold of the bar and don't do anything just just grab it i'll tell you what to do first <clears throat> all right right now i like the position you're in your shins are pretty much straight roll it back and touch your shins now sit down into it keeping it against your shins that's what i want to see right there Kay. right okay um, you pull with your hips pretty high, which again, it's not like it's dangerous, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Because you have a proper position in your back, you're not rounded and shit like that. But what I like to do is focus on, rather than just extending upwards, you know, like hip extension, I kind of like to focus on separating my legs and my torso. So I'll, I'll get down to position like this, I'll get down here, and then I kind of drive the hips down while trying to keep the torso right. a little bit more upright. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of try and stay as upright as I can while feeling strong. So that's why I like to do that position where I roll it back and then I sit down into it until I start to feel that upright, real strong, yeah, good yeah, starting yeah. position. And then you use your stomach to drive downwards into your upper thighs and really right. pry yourself off the floor. A little more knee travel, okay? 
Um, Not totally vertical shins. Well, you'll see. You'll you'll forward. feel that strong position. Yeah. You know what I mean. The other thing I want you to do is go ahead and grab it again. Um, you might not be heavy enough to take full advantage of this. I'm 350 or whatever, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a little bit easier for me. Roll it back until it touches your shins. This time when you sit down into it, I want you to try and sit back into it until you feel yourself starting to fall a tiny, tiny bit. Don't actually fall. Just feel some pressure being applied to Catch the bar. Catch me, Daddy. Catch that ass. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, Right there, I can yeah. tell you are starting to fall backwards. So if you started to pull, you'd fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what would happen. But what you want to do is, when you sit back down into it, right when you feel your body weight starting to apply pressure and your shoulder is just ever so slightly in front of the bar, let's have you do it again and get down to that position. Pull it back until it touches. Sit down into it. Right there is perfect. And but then I, get the gas. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I want to see your head like a little bit more upright than Go that, ahead. and we're going to get the belt. You want to grab that belt yeah, yeah. for me? The Lehman belt trick. Lehman belt trick. Um, go ahead and put it on Dress for me, me, dude. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you, you want to have it a little bit higher in the front than in the back. And you want that right under your sternum. You know what I mean? Yeah, for yourself, you like to kind of catch the upper abdomen area, diaphragm. You're going to be surprised, man. It's, it's even higher than that, actually. Raise it up like three inches. You might have to loosen the belt again. Yeah, uh, the key is to pull your shirt out from underneath it. Yeah, there you yeah. go. A little bit higher. I want it like right on your, like touching your what chest. What about almost. for some smaller people? Does this, does this catch your ribs a little Here's too much? Here's my nipples. Are we in a good spot? You know. Uh, <laughs> the belt's not all that tight, is that correct? It's not incredibly tight because you have to be able to get air and stuff. Right and now. if it keeps you from doing that, a it's better? not going to help you at all. Here, let's, um, let's just raise it up a tiny bit on either side there. Feels kind of good. Okay. Now, before you even deadlift, what I want you to do is take a big breath of air while you're at the top right here and just start to slowly compact yourself down and try and push your lower stomach into your upper thigh. Huge breath of air and force it out. Okay, um, try and keep your hips a little bit higher in the air just so it compacts a tiny bit better. You feel that? Yeah. You feel it actually creating yeah, yeah, some yeah. pressure at the bottom? That pressure at the bottom is gonna be what helps you off the floor like significantly. Yeah. Do you feel that same kind of pressure there when you wear the belt lower? Not typically. Yeah, you see what I, I mean? I feel uh, as rigid but I don't feel that kind of uh, uh -huh. pressure. The other thing yeah, is, yeah. If, if you'll notice, if, um, if you're just chilling there, you probably feel like your posture is like decent. Yeah, it feels you know good. What I mean? It actually, like it helps kind yeah. of keep your shoulders back and yeah. stuff, right? So that's gonna be like quite a benefit to you like over time, because it's, it's gonna feel natural to get your shoulders back and stuff. Because if you turn to the side so the camera can see it, this actually supports your natural posture. You know what I mean? Like it actually helps you keep your shoulders where you want them and stuff like that and you're back in the right position. And it's also about right in the center of your torso. Right. You know what I mean? And if the belt is to help support your torso, keep you from rounding and protect your spine and stuff. It's actually kind of interesting because the belt is like this, right? Mm -hmm. And then when the person goes to bend down to get the bar, the belt will sort of be almost in a straight line. Mm -hmm. Whereas opposed to when you have it down here, the belt will actually be pointed down more towards the floor. Yeah. Yep. As and you probably go to the do fatter it you are, the more it'll tilt. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I find that the lower belt position actually hurts how much I can lift. Yeah. I actually can't lift as much as I can beltless. Like it right. actually makes me lift less. And it's not going to be that way for everyone because once you get used yeah. to it, you're just used to it. But I mean, I try and get used to the, the best belt position you can, right? Yeah, we have seen a lot of people that wear a lower belt position. Uh, they end up hinging on their belt uh -huh. and not hinging on their hips. Yeah, we yeah. See So wherever the push, belt is, yeah. they push into it this way and hinge on that belt mm -hmm. rather than hinge on their hips and then they get overdeveloped erectors, no pancake ass. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a disease spreading across America. All right, let's try and do this, man. Walk back up and get the same foot position for me. That's about perfect. Grab the bar like you typically would, a little bit closer, actually. Roll it back until it touches your shins. Now, before you dip down, I want you to get a huge breath of air, and as you sit down into it, do that little fall back thing, but don't actually fall back, just a tiny bit of pressure, and force your stomach as hard as you can into your upper thighs, and try and create as much pressure as you can with your head just a tiny bit more up than normal. And then explode up. There you go. Okay, nice. Now, what I would like to have you do is even drop your hips a tiny, Hair tiny more. bit lower. You see what I'm saying? Um, now, you might not feel stronger that way right yeah, now, yeah. but as, depending on the assistance work you do, which we're going to go through, that's going to change. You know what I mean? Like, if you're doing a lot of deadlift stance box squats and stuff, and you get, say, 150 pounds stronger on those, you're going to be significantly stronger with your hips lower yeah. as compared to now. You know what I mean? So that, that'll change kind of drastically, along with leg curls and glute ham raises and shit. Yeah. There's one thing I'm not really sure of, maybe you know. People that deadlift with their hips high, 
or people that deadlift with their hips low. I'm, I know Olympic lifters have really strong quads and they right. typically try and deadlift with their hips low. You know what I mean? But I also see people that have really strong quads that, um, you know, their hips shoot up in the air and shit too. You know what I mean? It, right. it's, it's, it's very, I don't, I don't fully understand like which, it, yeah. it's, it's both sometimes, right? It, right, it, it right, varies yeah. considerably. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, your, your starting position is, uh, it's a matter of like reinforcing that starting position over a long period of time and, and trying to make it better and, and working on getting tight. The best lifters have the best starting position and they're able to finish the lift and kind of keep that, uh, that angle throughout the entire range of motion, you know? Yeah, I'm Kind always, of a skill. It's like a skill and strength at the same time. I'm always trying to figure out if a low hip position is strong hamstrings because you can stay in that, you know, lower yeah. like leg yeah. curl position yeah. or if it's strong quads. I just train I've both. Never been a, <laughs> yeah, I've never been a big fan of, uh, of dissecting it down yeah. to that because for that very reason, it's too hard to tell. Some yeah. say, oh, you got weak hips. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I don't Some know. of it might just be motor pattern. Yeah. Like some of the Olympic lifters, like you said, they have strong mm -hmm. quads, but they're also used to being in that position and just... Uh, finding their tightness from the bottom up, yeah. so then they can deadlift that way. Where a powerlifter, try to get his uh, hips too low, hips are gonna shoot up, especially mm -hmm. a beginner, end up in a shitty position. Yeah, I, I try and have my assistants work more or less mimic the deadlift. I try and use the same grip if I can, the same stance if I can, right. whether it's leg press, uh, squatting movement, um, leg curl, shrug, whatever. I mean, as, as much as I can do to kind of train that same range of motion or whatever, like you said, rather than dissect, be like hamstrings or quads right, right. specifically, you just do a deadlift stance, box squat. You know, it's, right. it's gonna train the same range of motion anyway. Um, are you uh, a fan at all of uh, like leaving a little bit of space between you and the barbell sometimes? Because uh, I noticed you're having him pull the weight right to his shins. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reason why I ask is because sometimes when people get into position, uh, as they go to lower their butt, they drive their knees forward a little bit and it shoves the bar that way a little mm -hmm. bit. How do, we, how do we kind of avoid that or do you not even believe that the knee should come forward much at all? You know, I try and uh, keep it relatively limited because the more forwards they come, the further the bar out is in front of you and stuff right. like that. And that's like the worst thing. You know what I mean? If you right. get out, that's everyone's problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they, they do one of these things where the knees come out and meet the bar out here. And right. then they end up, you know, they got to bring it back here before they can finish the lift and right. shit. And it's, it's hard to overcome that. Um, I pretty much just try and sit back down into it so my shins stay pretty upright. You know what I mean? And more or less just you know, focus on driving my heels through the floor rather than quad involvement and bringing my quads into I that see shit. What you're um, I'm very, you know, hamstring, glute, lower back, back dominant person. Right. Like my quads are, you know, they need some work. You know what I mean? So obviously they're not seemingly incredibly important for deadlifts. Um, so I, I try and just kind of keep them out of it to some degree, you know, keep right. the shins yeah. pretty upright, focus on the other stuff that I deem is more important. But um, not to say they aren't, you know what I mean? It helps. Yeah. But, the majority of your reps, uh, at least in your videos and training, are touch and go. Mm. Um, what's your thoughts on touch and go compared to rest or a, a controlled eccentric compared to a dropped eccentric? Um, I, I think it builds muscle better. Um, I'm definitely stronger that way. Uh, pretty much the better set I can get in, the better my progress is going to be. Um, pushing myself harder is what makes me make progress. It's where everyone makes progress, yeah, right. though, you know what I mean? And the way I can push myself hardest is to do touch and go reps. I find it safer, I find it builds muscle better. Um, I maintain better form. Um, in general, man, I, I have a lot of reasons I like it. It is not as good for training your max as pausing reps, right. you know what I mean? But that doesn't mean you can't gain strength faster that right. way as opposed to the other. I would you know say I mean? it's a, a good way to like overload too. If you think about it, like uh, for yourself, you did a 904 or something like that for four reps or 905, something like something that, right? Like that, yeah. And, uh, or 907, and then you did 909 in competition. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, a way to, it's a way to kind of overload, even though you're not handling uh, exactly more weight. Yeah. It's like two pounds less, but you did it for more repetition. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you, can, you don't have to go quite as heavy and you can still get in a great result. If right. someone's doing a single, you know, I don't think they're going to get as much done as if they did four reps with the same weight. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> right, just, right. just in general, that's uh, how I've always kind of felt about it. I do do singles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, it, power is important. Training for a single is important. But, um, you know, mostly I'll, I'll do that when I'm a little bit more, uh, like, burnt out kind of thing. You know, I'm, the weights are a little bit heavier. I'm more focused on a max versus... I do reps when I'm looking to make a lot of progress. If I, if I want to put 50 pounds on my deadlift, I'll do reps. If I'm looking to peak the strength I already have, singles. Right. You know what I mean? And I'll Makes focus sense. on assistance work. And you use quite a bit of reps sometimes. I mean, sometimes eight, sometimes 10, right? Deadlifts, like I mean, I'll, I'll do up to like 20. Yeah. I'll do up 20 something sometimes. Um, it's never any fun at all. It, yeah. it feels terrible. Even What's your best uh, that you've done 20 reps? 
you know, man, sometimes, you know how it is, you get a pump so bad at like 15, <laughs> yeah. it's, I think like 550 or something, you right. know what I mean, like something like that, but it's, if I just didn't get so incredibly pumped, man, who knows, you know what I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, I hit a brick wall somewhere at like 15, and then it's just, you saw, 765, yeah. or 8 comes around, I'm just like, it's, it's moving fast, and then it's just nowhere, yeah. you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you hit a wall. But uh, yeah, I'll do up to 20, but I typically stay in the, um, somewhere between like 1 and 10. I mean, somewhere in there. I, I like to work with 765 and 800 and 855 and stuff like that. And I'm never doing that shit for 20. Yeah. Not yet, you know what I mean? Um, that'd be nice, right? And uh, yeah, I, I, that tends to work best for me for gaining size and strength and singles, mostly for practicing power and stuff. I don't right. really feel like I get a whole lot stronger from doing singles. I feel like I get better at singles from doing singles. Yeah. I built all my strength and size doing this kind of shit for reps and rows and stuff. Let's have you uh, show us uh, what it looks like when you uh, do a deadlift. Do you need to warm up at all, or is this fine? This is uh, warm, you know, warm up weight just, enough. This is the warm up weight, <laughs> right? right? Typically, I'll take my stance about like here, like I said with you. Um, for me, this is that jumping position I've kind of right. developed. And you're fairly close to the bar. You're just an inch or two away. Well, I roll it back. What I do is I actually bring my shins slightly backwards. Okay. Like you were saying, I have decent mobility for deadlifts and stuff. Right. So I can, I can be down here with my back, not incredibly rounded, grab a hold of the bar, just like that. And um, this might even be a little bit too light to really fully demonstrate, um, but I'll, I'll kind of apply a little bit more pressure. I'll sit back into it and show you guys that, that fall back thing. For you guys on YouTube, I'm not actually applying any pressure to the bar, but you'll see it come off the floor anyway. See what I'm saying? Like I could probably do it with 405 or something. Right. And if you can get 400 pounds off the floor without actually trying, that's pretty useful. Right. You know what I mean? Especially if you're trying to go up to 800 or something, because you can get the bar to bend to about right here, a couple of inches upwards yeah. before it even leaves the ground. And I have to apply very little pressure to do it. Right. Um, and then, of course, it's just so much easier from there. Um, let's have you try with the belt position. Um, you know, you're, you guys are built quite a bit different. Right. Um, I don't you're, see that. You're able to, uh, <laughs> yeah, Mike's a lot more jacked than you, first of all. Um, you're able to really do a good job of getting, like, your shoulders high and your hips low. Mm -hmm. Um, some other people out there might really struggle with that. You, you saw me deadlift the other day. I was kind of almost tabletop, and especially when it got <laughs> kind of real heavy, my shoulders and hips were almost in the same spot. Uh, it's an issue for Mike a little bit as well. Not like he's not mobile enough to get into a position. It's hard to kind of maintain those positions. So how do, you know, uh, someone who's built differently, do you, are you still looking for them to strive to get into a similar position to yourself, or you kind of let people do their own? Well, I, there is some variation in how right. people are built. There are things that I think most people would benefit from. Like you, you're pretty good at picking the right bar position from where you want to deadlift from. Like you don't have to necessarily do that trick where you roll it back and touch it and sit down into it. A lot of people, some people are good at that. You yeah. know what I mean? Just as way more, 90% more people, you know what I mean, are terrible at it. They can't pick their starting yeah. position. You know what I mean? So I think most people should do that starting position thing where they roll it back, get it, and then sit down into it so it's where they want it. And I think most people should try and apply a little bit of that sitting back into a thing to try and get right. some pressure on the bar that they're not, you know, doing from their muscles kind of thing, like exerting their own force and wasting strength. Right. Um, that's also going to help them get their shoulders in proper alignment. Because if you notice, a lot of people when they deadlift, you know, they set up, they bring their knees out to it, and their shoulders are way over the bar. You right. know, and their back's like pretty flat and stuff too. Yeah. The hips are high and whatnot. Just show us, uh, show us again, show us your starting position. You don't even need to lift the bar. Then we'll have Mike go and then we'll have myself go. I just wanted people to kind of see the advantage and disadvantages that we, uh, we sometimes end up with. I'm like right there. Yeah. yeah. You're really able to get like your, your legs through and your chest is in a really good position. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go and you can see how shitty mine is, especially because I'm wound pretty tight today. That seems pretty good. Yeah, not too bad. That didn't seem bad at all. Not too shabby. I think a big part of it is having the stomach and stuff to really keep you in the proper back yeah, position. Yeah, that makes sense. Because when, when I force my stomach out, I'm really like, you know, I'm, I'm like two feet wide from front to back kind of thing. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's very easy for me to stay pretty upright and right. not lean forwards right. and stuff. A lot of people, they'll get off the floor and they'll, their hips will shoot up faster right. than their shoulders. You know what I mean? Right. And that's not what you're looking for, obviously. Right. I just like to point some of that stuff out to people because there's probably people that are watching that are 150 pounds 
somebody's watching 180 pounds, someone's 220, and there's just a lot of variation, you know, amongst us three. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good to point out it's not an excuse to lift like shit. Yes. But at the same time, you might start out in a different position than somebody else. Oh yeah, everyone's going to be in a slightly different position. It's um, totally due to arm length and stuff like that. But I find, you know, there are some things that pretty much hold true. Shins relatively upright. You know what I mean, bars or shoulder over the bar. Yeah. You know, sit down into it a little bit. You know, some people aren't strong that way. It's just like they have to do specific exercises and stuff like that, and you become strong that way. I'm not that big of a believer in trying to teach people different forms, like, uh, oh, your hips are too high, so drop them and use less weight for the next six weeks. I don't really believe so much in that. Right. For maybe for squats or bench or something, you know what I mean? But for deadlifts, as long as your back isn't rounding and you're safe, I'd rather bring up the weak muscle group or the lagging muscle group and then have your form improve because of that versus have you use way less weight and then when the weight goes back up, you just go back to the same shit. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, if you fix the weak area, you'll have the strength there for your max. You know, you'll have the right form for max effort shit instead of just the light stuff where you don't push real hard. But let's have you try that belt thing, man. I'm kind of excited about that. Let's have you do it again. Up, down, stay here? Yeah, stay there. Right. And just I'm going to have you sit back a little bit further. Try to get hips a little bit lower and then pull. Um, just drop your hips and I'll try and get you in the right position and then we'll have you pull. Roll it back until it touches your shins again. Huge um, belly of air, force into your, yeah. A little good. bit lower, a little bit lower, a little up. That looks really good. Yeah. I like, I like that one a little bit better than yeah. the, the last one. Let's see if uh, you can do it again and maybe have the timing just be a little faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to get there quicker. Yeah. yeah. Like you, you is, I mean, that's kind of what you're doing, right? You're yeah, in I just don't know where my hips The bottom are. position kind of quick. Uh, pretty quick. You know, right. I'm down there for like long enough to know I'm in the right position. Yeah. Right. That's about it. If I wait too long, practice. yeah, if, if I wait too long, it starts to go negatively. Yeah, so you kind of wiggle your shoulders a little bit and then once that's yeah. done, then boom, you're in the right spot. Yeah, that's Tessa's favorite. The, the butt wiggle. Hey now. A little shaking. Let's try that one more time. Big breath of air and I'll tell you when to, to shoot up. Up. Yeah, go. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> As you continue to build up your abs and like upper back strength and strengthen the right areas yeah. and stuff, that will feel great for you. Right now, when you explode off the floor, your hips come up ever so slightly yeah, faster than your shoulders and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if you strengthen the right things, that won't happen. It'll just be very fluent and like awesome feeling and very yeah. explosive and good. And you'll be really upright and you'll feel really strong off the floor. And if you're strong off the floor and you're pretty upright, the whole lift is easy. You know what I mean? Like you no longer have issues with anything more or less. Yeah. Um, but I that do, that's pretty good. I do I, feel tight and compact. Yeah. When I get in that position, butthole look tight. It look good. Mm -hmm. What about uh, bands and chains? You ever um, train with any of those or have it for any of your clients? Um, I like reverse bands. Um, I don't typically have my clients use them simply because you don't know most, their setup or whatever. I don't yeah. know their setup. They don't always have bands. You know what I mean? And most of the time, I have like five other things I'd like them to try first. You know what I mean? So if I worked with them for two years or some shit, they'd use bands at some point. Yeah. Right. But typically, we start with like basic shit first and then progress as that stuff stops working. So where does your uh, explosive power come from? Um, you know, just trying to be explosive. I move everything as fast as I can. It's important to make warm-ups feel really light if you want the heavy weights to feel light too. Um, never tried to pull slow. I've never, you know, anything like that. It's always as much speed as humanly possible. Right. Um, abs have a lot to do with it for me. Uh, applying weight to the bar before I even start has a lot to do with it for me. And, uh, you know, just mentally trying to think of being as fast as humanly possible. You know, everyone's always said that. It's been no secret for like 10, 20 years now. Right. It's all about speed. So I always just focused on it and it just kind of came around. I don't find myself incredibly explosive, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. But like, yeah, I guess with warm-ups, right? You know, light enough weight I can move shit fast. Um, but yeah, just, just, trying, just trying to be fast. Uh, you know, I, I guess I've always, I was pretty fast at sprints and stuff. You know, right. I, I'm fast twist mu muscle fiber, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Maybe I'm mixed, I don't know, because I'm, I'm good <laughs> at reps too. Yeah. Um, but you know, just same as everyone else, effort. What about when you do um, assistance exercises? Are, is there any intention or is there any plan on uh, you know, uh, working towards being more explosive when you're doing some of that? Are you kind of thinking about like, man, I'm just gonna rip the hell out of 900 next time I lift it? Or like, what's kind of the thought process behind some of the assistance work when you're doing it? With assistance work, well, I try and make everything, I try and be strong on everything. And for me to be right. strong, you have to move stuff fast and powerful. But I'm never so much thinking of moving it fast and powerful. I'm not thinking of moving it slow either. I'm just trying to be as strong as I can on that side. Right. As much weight, as many reps as I can do kind of thing. Um, never, uh, never super focused on speed with like rows or anything like that. Although there's tons of speed. Yeah. You know I mean, I move rows faster than I deadlift kind of thing. I throw it around. 
Um, but a lot of what I do, I guess, does involve speed because I am doing higher reps with it. Right. I'm trying to do a lot of reps really fast. As you, like, you, I don't know if you saw the rows. You guys will see the rows at some point. You're, try, you're trying to use uh, a, a good amount of weight, and you're trying to do kind of a high, high rep, so mm -hmm. you have no, uh, no choice but to use some momentum and to be yeah. fast. Yeah, momentum's uh, quite important for deadlifts. You know, it's important for all the power lifts, but like, I find um, if you can develop like, uh, like speed on stuff like a Yates row, you get just so much power from right here when you deadlift. Because you take 455, and it's coming down really fast to reverse it, might be applying 700 pounds of pressure right here yeah. 15 or 20 times. You know what I mean? So when you're deadlifting and you get to hear all of a sudden from doing all these rows where you're cheating all the time, you have tons of lower back and lat strength to just really finish out that lift. And um, I found that to be, that's where the, the bar whip thing I think comes from. When, yeah. I, when I shake the bar, I think that has a lot to do with my rows. It's super, super similar for me. Yeah, you pull the weight and the whole thing fucking jumps off the ground. Yeah, I've, I've known a lot of big deadlifters that uh, swore by doing rows just like that. My right. brother always did them and he's a, a strong deadlifter as well. He doesn't do deadlifts really. Um, so, Was there any uh, like weird little secret or eye-opening thing that happened between 700 and 900 pound deadlift? <laughs> uh, other, than, uh, other than just busting your ass, I mean, we know that that's part um, of it. Well, I mean, about training? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, not, uh, not supplementation. Right. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, I learned the importance of rest and recovery and stuff. Uh, it was never that important in the beginning. But when you start to realize that, oh, your body's made of meat and stuff, and you can, like, <laughs> you can mess that up, um, <laughs> right. I learned that you have to take time off. Uh, learned the importance of assistance work, more or less, in that time frame. I, I went from um, probably between 650 to 900 is where assistance work really came into play. Uh, before that, I, I focused more on like something like you know squats and deadlifts, and right. you know I did good mornings and stuff too. But I don't think it was. I didn't really specify my assistance work as much as I do now. Yeah. Like now, all my assistance work is like very specific. It's exactly for this part of the lift. It's right. you know, I'm doing this because of this, and it's going to make me stronger. Whereas before, it was just I'm doing a good morning for hamstrings. Right. Groups, you know what I mean? It wasn't well, I, I, what I always point out to people is sometimes like uh, the beauty of something like a deadlift is that it's a barbell movement and the beauty of a supplemental exercise or assistance exercise is that it's not a deadlift. <laughs> that you could put a lot into it and you can get a lot out of it without it costing you a lot. The deadlift can cost you a lot, especially at your strength. Oh, yeah. You pull 800 for a set of 10 or 8 or whatever it might be and that's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. I can target my deadlifting muscles so much better with assistance work than I can, you know, deadlifting. Like, I'm never right. going to hit my lats as hard on deadlifts as I can with 500-pound rows. Right. You know I mean, I'm never going to train my leg 500 pound rows, hard. Mike. Get on that. You know, honestly, that's... I How many sets? How many reps? <laughs> One um, set. I, I recommend Got that it. people just getting really strong on those exercises. Yeah. Most people don't. They don't um, find it as very important to get yeah. strong on rows and shrugs and stuff like that. I can't tell you how many power lifters I know who are like, oh, I've shrugged the same weight for like 10 years. It's like, well, if you want to deadlift 800, why are you shrugging 405 or 495? You know what I mean? Right. Like, it'd probably be helpful if you could shrug 800 for 20 <laughs> if you want to deadlift 800. You right. know what I mean? And that's more or less my thought process. Just get all your deadlifting muscles as big and as strong as possible. Target them specifically. Pick the best exercises for that spot in your deadlift, for your weakness, right. for that muscle. And it all comes together into a very big lift. You know what I mean? Awesome. Any other questions, Mike? That's it. I'm that's to how to deadlift 800. with the uh, Baby Slayer. 909 pound official deadlift, the strongest deadlift in the history of America, the history of the United States. Thank you so much. And that is it from Super Training Gym. Thank you, bitch. <laughs>